Did you hear me, someone? You're not going to live. You are not going to live. You've made the plans. You've prepared yourself. But if you don't repent, you will die before those plans are executed. You did! Shut up, Akasir. Because God is no respecter of person. He doesn't need you. You need him. And he's been merciful to you all up until this time. And now the time has come for judgment. Some people think, yes, the Lord is so good, but they don't know there's hellfire. You're not supposed to be afraid of Satan. You're supposed to be afraid of the wrath of God. Because if you ever see his wrath, there's no escape. If God has turned his back on you, what can the children of God do? We can't even pray if God hears us for you. So the soul that sins, it shall die. Mm. Don't hold on to mommy's coattail. She can't help you. You can't hold on to somebody and say, well, if they pray for me, even though I'll do this, I'll be all right. No, you won't. God has got your number today, someone. You better take heed to these words. And God, sometimes love is tough. Love has to be tough. When you, 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 you do things wrong, your parents spank you. Well, you're getting a spanking today because God loves you. And he's not willing that any should perish. So why don't you just turn and live? Verse 6 says, But if the watchman see the sword come and blow not the trumpet, and the people be not warned, if the sword come and take away any person from among them, he is taken in his away in his iniquity, but his blood will I require at the watchman's hand. We can't afford to whitewash and doctor up the message. We have to give it out because we are hired by God Himself. I, I can speak for myself. I'm not doing this for money. Shut up, Mosia. A righteous man does not preach for money. He's supposed to get money. It's work. But he's not doing it because of money. I guarantee you they were doing it before they got paid any money. You go to university and study hard to, so that you can occupy your profession. You give your services, you get paid. Well, the men and women of God that work in the vineyard of the Lord ought to be recompensed. But they're not just doing it for money. They're doing it because there's a judgment on their heads if they don't deliver the word in season, out of season, whether you hear it or if you don't like it. God will require the blood of the people on the hands of the watchman who's responsible to deliver the message. And I'm going to show you something in a minute that's going to rock your world. Right here in Ezekiel. The scripture says in verse 7, So thou, O son of man, I have sent thee a watchman unto the house of Israel. God has sent this church and others like it in this city as watchmen of the city. You're not supposed to be hand in glove with the enemy. You're supposed to go into enemy territory and you're supposed to get souls out of that territory. You're not supposed to play with Satan because if you dance with him, he doesn't change. He still remains a devil, but you will change. Your, your disposition will change. Don't flirt with the enemy. He's coming to sting you. He's coming to impute poison in your system. And when you think you're clean, you're dirty. And you're already inoculated with the poison of sin. And it's only a matter of time before your sin finds you out. But you must use wisdom in winning people. You don't go and beat them over the head sometimes when God says use a soft glove. Are you hearing me somehow? God, will, God has already prepared people to deal with certain kinds of people. There are times when you speak hard, there's a time you speak softly. Some of you have to pull out of the, the fire with their garments potted, spotted in the flesh, but you are sent to pull them out. So don't go there and hang out with them. Go there and look for the opportunity to make a tug at the rope that God has put in your hands to pull them out. In other words, go with a purpose. 
and the Lord will present the opportunity. Are you hearing me, somebody? Because time is short. God has made you a watchman in this city. And there's a crop to be harvested. So, therefore, thou shalt hear the word at my mouth and warn them from me, says the Lord. When I say unto the wicked, O wicked man, thou shalt surely die. Don't care if they say, oh, well, that's such hard words. How can you speak like that? You're not supposed to care. You're supposed to set your face like flint and deliver the message like a good heavenly postman. All the postman does is deliver the mail. And then when he delivers it, he's gone. You're supposed to deliver the mail. If you hold on to the mail, that person may not get the message and it could be detrimental to them and you're to blame. Are you hearing me, somebody? Yeah. And if you are delivering mail and you're not the right kind of postman, give up the job. Oh, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You are occupying somebody else's position. God didn't send you. That's why the people are not getting the message. Jesus. The Lord is saying somebody is occupying someone else's position. Hear me somebody. This is the Holy Ghost speaking. You're occupying somebody's position. You know you are not there and you're not supposed to. You know what you're doing in private. You know you're not dedicated. You're occupying space that you don't belong in. Keep up the post. Humble yourself and step out of the post. Give it to somebody who God has prepared. Because the people must hear the message so that they can turn. Because God will blame you for whatever happens. Somebody. Sacrifice and prepare yourself 
so that you can be appropriately delivering the word every time people of God gather. Because the souls are precious before the Lord. Praise the Lord. Are you hearing me so Hallelujah. Thank you. Let the Lord continue. When I say unto the wicked, O wicked man, thou shalt surely die. If thou dost not speak to one of the wicked of his way, that wicked man shall die in his iniquity, but his blood will I require at your hand. Nevertheless, if thou warn the wicked of his way to turn from it, if he do not turn from his way, he shall die in his iniquity. But thou hast delivered thy soul. You've done your job. It's not your fault. You were faithful. The person didn't hear. Therefore, O son of man, speak unto the house of Israel. Thus he speaks, saying, If our transgressions and our sins be upon us, and we pine away in them, how shall we then live? In other words, someone said, It's hopeless then. We're undoomed. God is saying, You're not doomed. I'm giving you the word so you can turn. Don't be inundated with so much stuff that you can't make a move towards the altar of repentance. God gives opportunity for people to repent. And the door is open for anybody that wants to come that way. Are you hearing me so far? Yes. It's not lost. While you are living, there is hope. While you are alive, there is hope. And anything dirty going through the blood of Jesus Christ can be clean. That's why the Lord says, be ye clean that bear the vessel of the Lord. Because it is possible. You can be clean. You can be used. God can take a birth, dirty, embarrassed past and clean it up and it's not even known, not even mentioned. Oh God. And he turns you around and makes you a trophy you, that he shows up before heaven and before people Hallelujah. and says, look what I have created and made you a meat for his service. Isn't God good, son? Yes. Yes. Because that one had the heart to go down and confess their faults and repent and turn from their wicked ways. It doesn't even matter what you did. If you come to Jesus and you say, Lord, I am a sinner. Save me, Lord. He wants to save you more than you want to be saved. Oh, hallelujah. So the time is there for you right now. Don't say it's hopeless. It's not hopeless. I'm coming down. I don't want to be too long. But I have to deliver this lesson. Hallelujah. Let's go to verse 12. Therefore thou son of man, say unto the children of Israel, now watch this. The righteousness of the righteous shall not deliver him in the day of his transgression. As for the wickedness of the wicked, he shall not fall on the wicked, he shall not fall thereby in the day that he turneth from his wickedness. Neither shall the righteous be able to live for his righteousness in the day that he sinned. When I say to the righteous that he shall surely live, if he trusts to his own righteousness and commit iniquity, all his righteousnesses shall not be remembered. But for his iniquity that he hath committed, he shall die for it. So we can't say, well, I've been following God for years. And then you come in the house of God or you do something that is displeasing to the Lord and think he's going to go look at your pastor and say, because of that, then I'm going to allow you to go into heaven when you haven't repented over this. The Lord says, you're going to, I won't even remember your righteousness. Are you hearing me, someone? Now, this is not my word. This is God's word. I'm just delivering the message. But the Lord is fair. He said, if you're wicked and you turn from your wicked ways, you. all your wickedness won't be remembered. Thank you, Lord. It doesn't matter what you've done. Thank you, Jesus. If you're willing to humble yourself oh, God. and pray and seek my face and turn from your wickedness, I will hear from heaven. I will forgive your sins and I will heal your life. Spirit, I'll heal, I'll heal, I will heal. 
opportunity and God sends his word and you don't want to hear the word of the Lord and you are just puffed up in yourself and pride gets in your heart, don't count on your righteousness. Remember Uzziah the king? He was a great king of Judah. God prospered him everywhere he went. He also destroyed the Philistines and all nations around him paid him tribute. And he built the walls of Jerusalem and fortified them. And he was so righteous before God. Isaiah was a relative of his and Isaiah was a prophet under his employment. And guess what? This king was a good king with a good prophet as his relative and also hearing the word of the Lord. But the scripture says, when he was strong, he looked at the temple. And though he's king, he's not the priest. He wanted to occupy the position that was not his. And he said, you know what? I've been doing such a good job as a king, I think I can be a priest as well. So he came to the temple one day and the priest stopped him because he was about to go into the holy place. And they said, where are you going, Uzziah? You see, in the house of God, it doesn't matter what title you are, you have. It's alright to have a title because you occupy the function. But when you're before the Most High God in His presence, you're just who you are. That's right. Amen. So they didn't, they didn't say King Uzziah. He's come to the house of God in the presence of the Shekinah glory and he spoke prophetically and said, Uzziah, where are you going? He says, I've come to offer a sacrifice unto the Lord. I've come to occupy the office of a priest. They said, Uzziah, don't go any further. And he pushed and he said, I'm the king, and he moved them out the way. And he took his oblation before the Lord. And when he went before the altar of incense, God smote him. He wouldn't listen to the warning. It was said, God is faithful. He loved Uzziah. Yes. But Uzziah wouldn't listen. So the only thing that's going to make him here is for him to be smitten. And he was, leprosy just started to grow all over him. And the priests looked at him and they said, get him out, get him out, get him out, leprosy. And the man himself dropped the incense and run out of the house of God, run out of the tent of the tabernacle, run out of where he used to live and had to live in the until the day of his death because he went where he was not supposed to go because he looked on his previous righteousness and said it's good enough for him to move somebody who's occupying the place that God put there and then coming in and said okay I'm going to take over now God is warning someone. Hallelujah. Your righteousness before will not help you now. You've lost your first love. Hallelujah. You forgot where God took you from. You forgot that God had mercy on you before. You've been walking with God for a while and you thought that's good enough. Now you enter into the portals where you don't belong. Somebody. Get out while you can.
Don't be a Uzziah. The man couldn't even stay with his wife and children. He couldn't stay in his house. He had to be away from everybody until the day of his death. Because he refused to hear the warning. Somebody. I can't go any further. You lost your first place. You need to get back to where you can invite the mercy of God on you before He deals with you according to your iniquity. Hear the word of the Lord, somebody. You lost your first love, your passion for the work that God gave you. You lost that and you want somebody else's. And think if you shift position, then you can get that passion back. No, you're taking up somebody else's space. It's not for you, Uzziah. Back up. Get back before the Lord smites. Because he will smite. Jesus told the man who was limp for 38 years. He said, listen, will you not be made whole? Yes. But when I come there, somebody else take my place. He says, right where you are, take up your bed and walk. And he took up his bed and walked. Came into the temple and said, how are you walking on the Sabbath day? Why? Because they can't do miracles. So they're using the letter of the law. See, that's what people will do. They will substitute the anointing for even education. Oh my God. It's not about human education. It's about divine revelation. And if you're educated, you still need divine revelation. And if you're not, God will educate you from glory. Let's go. Are you hearing me, somebody? It's who God uses. They are equipped to occupy before the Lord in his people's place. In the house of the Lord. So he went to the house of the Lord to declare that he, he can walk. And they're already accusing him and saying, hey, you're out of place. You are walk, carrying your bed on the, on the Sabbath day. And he said, well, how, how is this possible? Well, he that told me to get up and walk, he's the one that gave me the, the authority to walk on the Sabbath day, so I'm walking.
God is long suffering, gracious in mercy. He's loving kindness, and His graciousness will cover you. He won't let anybody know your business if you're willing to come when He calls you. He will cover you with His blood. Under the shadow of His wings will He protect you. He will wipe away your sins that you can't even remember. That you have to think hard to remember how you used to be. You won't even recognize yourself when the Lord transforms you. Hallelujah. Matter of fact, people who once knew you would have to grab you on the street, sit you down and say, what happened to you? And you can, you're a walking testimony of God's grace because you're transformed and they are witness to it. You give them no excuse because as Jesus is his name. Hallelujah. 
abundant and will say, thank you, Dios. If there's any here that wants to put on his name in water baptism and wear the badge of heaven and earth called by the name of Jesus, today is your day if you so choose. Hallelujah. Come on, Shadalabakisiande. Don't see anybody else. See Jesus. And if your heart is indicting a good matter, if you are pure in your desire, ask the Lord what you will right now. And it's yours. Ask Him right now. That which you can't handle, He will take care of. He'll bring the right people, the right places, the right circumstance, the right situation. The right events will suddenly pop up and occur before your face. God will handle what you can't control. The thing you control is your decision. Will you believe the Lord right now? All you can deal with is your own soul, your own self, your own spirit, your own body, your temple, which is that of the Holy Ghost, if you have the Holy Ghost. If you don't have the Holy Ghost, the Shekinah wants to come in and suck with you. It doesn't matter if you're a married woman or child, young or old. It doesn't matter if you're saved and sinner. If you believe God today, and if you humble yourself before the mighty hand of God, what you're asking for, if it's in His will, it is yours. In the name of Jesus of Nazareth, Yeshua HaMashiach, Jesus, Yeshua HaMashiach, in the name of Yeshua, Jesus, Holy Ghost, in Jesus' name, Shalom Kaniya, Jesus, Jesus, Hallelujah, Glory, 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 Jesus, Jesus. Hallelujah. Somebody touch me, says the Lord. Virtue is gone out from me, says the Lord. Hallelujah. Somebody is touching me. Somebody means what they're saying. And they're saying what they mean. Somebody is touching me, says the Lord. 